Forgive me if you hear some cooking in the background, because I'm cooking at the moment. So you may hear the stove, but anyway, don't be distracted by that. A very quick message for you. I want you to be led by the Heavenly Father directly as an autonomous human being doing the will of the Heavenly Father. Yes, you are part of communities, which is a healthy thing to be. We are community creatures, but as an individual, you ought to be led by the Heavenly Father directly. And as an individual, you ought to use the servants in your social relationships. So I just want you to ask yourself some questions from time to time. Asking yourself, I'm not telling you to ask others these questions. Number one, am I here for a long-term benefit? It's one question I want you to ask yourself. Because if you aren't into a long-term benefit, that means you're not into long-term solutions. And if you're not into long-term solutions, that means you're just escaping. That means you're on the run. That means you're operating purely out of attachment. Now, attachment is human. There's nothing wrong with attachment. However, you can't base your whole life on attachment. That's not a smart thing to do. For example, let's say uh, you're on the road driving and suddenly you encounter a traffic jam. Now, you are attached to arriving on time. That's how you were raised by your parents. Now, arriving on time is helpful in this lifetime. If you need to catch the train or if you need to attend a wedding or catch an airplane. So being on time for specific events is relevant. However, realize that life is not a program. There are times things happen that can delay you or you need to adapt. But if you keep operating from attachment and you're driving on the road in kind of traffic jam, it will annoy you, it will trigger anger in you. And because you operate only from attachment, this anger will linger around in you and you will arrive at your destination a bit later. And when you arrive there, you will be in a negative mood and this negative mood will also affect other people before you know you have a dark climate over there. And this will harm your social relationships and if it's a job, you may end up losing your job because, well, once you sow negativity, the negativity then to come back or maybe you don't lose your job because you're the employer, but then you have staff members who don't trust you. So, and anyway, being triggered in a negative way is not a good idea. Now, something can only be triggered if it's already inside of you. Let's say someone uh, cuts you out in Papiamento, that's my native language. Let's say someone from my home island, Curacao, would cuss you out in Papiamento. You don't understand Papiamento, so you just hear someone uttering salt out of your mouth. And they look angry at you and think, oh, what is going on here? But if they cuss you out in, for example, English or your native language, now for some of you, English is your native language. But anyway, if they do that, now you understand what they're doing. And now, because you have the attachment, of being uh, respected or attachment of being um, recognized, now the opposite is happening and now the attachment in you is triggered, but in the wrong way. Now attachment can be triggered the right way. Let's say you have a good relationship with your father and one day your father uh, calls you. When you see it's your father calling you, A, you get happy. Why? Because you have, you have a positive association with this individual. Or let's say now that uh, you like this song when you are 15 years old and now you're in your 30s and on the radio suddenly you hear the song again. Attachment triggered in a positive way. So, attachment is not the enemy. Attachment is natural for human beings. It's the way we relate to one another, it's the way we build identities for ourselves and the, and the way we maintain reputations. So, attachment is not the problem, because operating without attachment is impossible for human beings.
The question is, this attachment you have, is it Christ-centered? Because Christ is the center of existence. Heaven and earth revolves around him. He is Lord. He is the life himself. He is our leader, our God. So if anything is not Christ-centered, that means it can be used against you to harm you. Simple as that. The second question you need to ask is, what is the context of this attachment? For example, let's say you were 17 years old. You and your friends went to a nightclub. Now, you are not old enough to enter the nightclub, so someone made fake IDs for you. Now, you know this was something wrong, but you all did it. And at that nightclub, there was this song. You, you all you dance on. And you also got in contact with some people from the opposite sex. They were much older than you. A lot of them had no idea you were just teenagers back then. But anyway, there's a memory you have with your friends. Now those friends of yours, they're all you are all grown up now, you have your own families now. This happened 20 years ago. So you're 37 now. If one day on the radio you hear this song that you danced on when you sleep in that nightclub, it will trigger all those memories. And of course, you'll be happy to be, wow, there was a great, uh, man, there was a great time. Me and my buddies entered the nightclub illegally. Now, you never got in trouble, and it's more than two, it's, uh, 20 years ago, so you can't be prosecuted for it. And by the way, you were a minor. So, they won't be able to prosecute you even because the one that provides you the fake ID and the nightclub will be prosecuted. You were the minor. Now you may get some felony or whatever, but anyway, it's 20 years ago. But look at this. Those friends you had back then, many of them didn't end up well. Some of them ended up divorced, others ended up in prison, and others are, have all types of domestic violence issues. So understand the following. Back then, at seven years old, you were just a teenager wanting to have a good time. At age 19, you became a believer, you became born again. And from that point on, you began to walk with the Lord. So, those people are not on the same level as you. They refuse to serve the Heavenly Father, they just want to keep escaping. So, you hearing that song, and you feeling happy uh, because of the memory you have, there's nothing wrong with that. Relating all the memories, if the memories are pleasant or in memories uh, makes you happy, there's nothing wrong with that. But look at this, you're not 17 anymore. And you need to see that. For, for, because this is how it goes. Let's say now that Satan wants to uh, destroy you. And Satan wants to destroy everyone because he's miserable. But look at this. Satan cannot just go out there and tear you apart. He needs to have an entry point. And Satan knows that you used to hang out with those big buddies before you became born again. And this song was one of your favorite songs that played at that nightclub. Satan knows that that memory has left a deep imprint on your mind. So now you're 37 and Satan wants to bring destruction in your life. He will trigger circumstances to play the music when you're around. Maybe you're going to a barber shop and right there at the barber shop that song is played on the radio. Demons orchestrate this behind the scenes. The demons manipulate the brain of the radio host to select this song to play at that time because demons uh, knew you would be at the barber shop at that moment to hear the song. Now your that attachment is triggered and old memories come back and you remember all those brothers you sang out of it. Then, a few days later, you get a Facebook friend request. And ends up being someone you used to go to school with. Not your old friends uh, directly, but people that knew them. And little by little, events keep on unfolding, and before you know it, you're hanging out with those guys again, and you begin to absorb their negativity and their frustration in life. The thing is, you are a believer, you walk by faith, you've learned to process things and to overcome. They didn't. They just go around in a cycle of, of 
escalation. So, being triggered by that song is not wrong. It's just a trigger. And the trigger in this case is positive. But just because the trigger was a positive one, because if you have good memories or good association with it, doesn't mean you should surrender to being triggered. Yes, enjoy the great memories. Let it motivate you, say that you had a good time back then. But that's it. That's it. The moment you keep lingering with attachment, that attachment becomes an entry point for evil spirits and for society to gain a hold on you. Let's use another example. Let's say you have an ex-boyfriend who was a narcissist and he took advantage of you. Now you are married, happily married, you have children. Now, you never reach out to your ex-boyfriend, you don't even want to think about him, it's over. But look at this. The reason you got involved with that guy was because you were looking for Prince Charming. You were programmed by Disney movies you grew up with and by society that promoted this, tr this true love romance. Now, those triggers, like I said this, those attachments of finding Prince Charming are still in you. You, cho you chose to be with your uh, current husband for practical reasons and you do have actual love for him. But somewhere inside of you, you, have, you haven't unlearned this Disney fairy tale. No, you're not aware of this. Your husband is not aware of this. But those attachments will be triggered at some point. And because these attachments are negative, because they're not Christ-centered and not even healthy for you, there comes a point in your marriage you will feel disappointed. And you don't even know why you feel disappointed. It's because you have this expectation rooted in your mind that is holding you back. You can't fully enjoy your marriage and family life because there's some expectation inside of you, some outcome you're attached to that doesn't exist. So that ex-boyfriend is gone, he's not coming back. But because you still have this negative attachment inside of you, now evil spirits can use this attachment to bring harm to your family and to pass on the curse onto your children. Let me say it like this. You're not delivered because you haven't unlearned all those other and all those toxic expectations. Just because you cut off your ex-boyfriend and you never contact him again, doesn't mean that you have been delivered. That situationship or relationship, I'm gonna call it because an actual relationship, I'm gonna call it. That thing you had with your ex-boyfriend was the symptom that revealed that you had wrong thinking and toxic expectations. That's why you fell for your ex-boyfriend. Those same thoughts and expectations, you still have them inside of you, but they haven't been triggered yet. This time will not be your ex-boyfriend. This time it will be another guy, or this time will be an incident at work. Or this time it can be you hear some bad news, and you suddenly think my life would have been better if I found the right man. The thing is, when you don't unlearn toxic expectations, those toxic expectations become negative attachments and negative attachments are like landmines in your mind. You don't know they're there, but they can be triggered and boom, something bad happens. And a lot of people out there, they are like a minefield. They have so many toxic expectations that they don't even realize are toxic. Why? Because those toxic expectations are normalized. So they are filled with negative attachment and it's just a matter of time before a disaster or a tragedy happens. Why, do I, why am I telling you all of this? 
because I want you to self-reflect, to check whether you don't have any negative attachments. If you do, don't be ashamed, admit it, and if you need therapy, if it's so deep rooted in your therapy or counseling, get therapy and counseling. I don't care what other people uh, say about you. It's not an embarrassment to admit you need counseling or therapy. It is not. I will cheer you on for getting therapy or, or counseling. That shows me you take responsibility and you want a solution and you're doing something about it. If people want to laugh at you or look down on you for going to therapy, oh, praise God, you don't need those people. Let them go. Especially amongst African Americans, I need to highlight this. Because amongst Af African Americans, till now, there is this stigma on mental health. This needs to go. It's not only African Americans, but I highlight it because there are many uh, African Americans following my channel too. It is not an embarrassment that means you need therapy and counseling because of unprocessed trauma or unprocessed issues. Unprocessed hurt needs to be processed so it will not become a stronghold on you. All right. So that's why I want you to ask the question whether you're in it for long-term benefits. The second question I want you to ask yourself, and it's not about you, it's about the people around you. Are these people here for long-term benefits? And I want to explain this question because some may interpret the question the wrong way. If you have a lot of money because you have a good paying job, of course there's going to be people that stay there because they are there to benefit from your finances. They're not there for long-term benefits, they're not there for long-term exploitation. I'm not talking about that. What I mean is, are those people around you interested in contributing to long-term well to the long-term well-being of their own community? Are they there willing to contribute to the long-term well-being of their community? Are they? If they are not, then ask yourself, why are you even around those people and why are they around you? Because if they're not there for the long-term benefit of their community, that means they just want to take advantage of, of those around them. Don't be afraid to ask this question. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't have fear anyway, because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but has given us a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. And part of having a sound mind or mental health includes that you ask the practical and urgent questions. Are these people around me here for the long-term benefit of the community? If they are not, that means that they are narcissistic and that means that they don't care at all when it comes down to it about your well-being and not even their own. Okay, if someone is there on a holiday, of course you're not there long term in the community. So I'm not telling you to ask this question about just a passenger or a tourist, okay? Or a seasonal worker. If someone is somewhere for more than three months, then they no, the, the, those three months are just a convention. It's not a rule. But if someone is somewhere for at least three months or more, that means they're somewhere long term. And anywhere you stay long term, maybe as an intern or maybe as a student or someone that works, whatever, you have natural obligations to the community you reside in. You do. Even if you're there for just a few days because you're passing through or you're a tourist, you still have the obligation uh, to behave properly so, that it, so you don't cause any trouble. How much more obligations do you have on the long term towards the community when you're there long term? And here's the thing, the community also has obligations towards you. So it's not just a one-way street, it goes both ways. So when you ask the question, are these people around me here for the long term benefit of the community? What you're doing is, you are looking at the bigger picture. You are a human being. You are a community creature. You need community to remain sane. So you're part of a community. So if, peop if there are people there who don't care about the community, they just want to exploit the community, or they just want to be left alone, they're neglectful, then you know that those people indirectly mean you harm. Why? They don't even mean themselves any good. 
they don't mean themselves any good because if they meant good for themselves, they would be responsible community creatures, and they're not. If they don't even mean themselves any good, how can they mean good to you? Even if they are not evil people, if they are so, if they're so neglectful that they don't even mean well to themselves, then how can they mean well to you? Ask yourself these questions. Too often, believers end up in bad circumstances or in dark situations you could have easily avoided. Ask yourself these questions because I can guarantee you one thing. If you end up surviving a horrible time period in your life that you could have, that you easily walked away from, very few people are going to have sympathy for you. Some people even don't accuse you, saying you were in on it all along. Even that's not the case. And now, you not only do you need to recover from the situation or circumstance, but you also need to recover from your own, own self-condemnation and you to recover from uh, the insults and attacks from other people. Now, some people are not saying that you have to act well to prevent insults from other people, because people that will retaliate against you anyway if you're a believer. What I'm putting out here is that 9 out of 10 times when a bad situation approaches us or when we encounter a bad situation, we have the option and the ability to walk away or to shake the dust off our feet. But too often we don't do that because we don't even realize there's a bad situation there. We don't see things for what they are. Why? Because our own perception is blurred and our own perception is backwards. A blurred perception means you don't really discern well what goes on. A bad perception is you don't see, you don't see anything going on because you're so focused on escaping. You're so focused on your attachments. Learn to see things for what they are. Learn to pray and fast when you lack understanding. Learn to ask for help when necessary. Learn to receive help, even help you didn't ask for when necessary. Because some people can see you're in dire need and they have no negative, not everyone has negative intentions. Some really want to intervene to prevent a disaster. If that's the case, receive the intervention. If, they, if, you, if you can clearly see that the intervention is just a trick to trap you, then walk away. Don't argue, walk away. Ask yourself those questions. To yourself, am I here for the long-term benefit? And then ask whether others are there for the long-term benefit. Ask yourself those questions. Well, that's it for now. Keep running through in Christ and be at peace.